Hi there. My name is Amod and I am the founder of Consonance Acoustics, an acoustical design company. In this video, we will talk about why, if at all, should there be a slope for auditorium seating in an auditorium and what are the things that you should consider while designing the said slope, should you choose to have one. The spoiler is, you should always choose to have one. While designing auditoriums, we have oftentimes seen people unable to decide how the seating should be. Clients usually depend upon architects and designers and therefore architects and designers should always have definitive answers to these questions. It is therefore important to understand the logic behind making these decisions. This video will help you design smaller auditoriums or seminar halls etc as well. As a quick introduction, we at Consonance Acoustics have designed and executed many studios and auditoriums with a 100% track record of meeting the acoustical requirements using our patented and other absorbers. If you are facing troubles or want help in designing auditoriums, you can reach out to us on the number mentioned in the description. It is almost taken for granted that an auditorium will have a sloping floor. It is intuitive to think why the slope exists. The first thing that comes to our mind is the sight lines, which will make it possible for people sitting in the farther rows to have a decent visibility of the stage. Did you also know that there is an acoustical impact of the way the audience is positioned? There is something known as grazing sound incidence. It literally means what the name suggests. Sound waves will graze the surface which is parallel to them when the distance is sufficiently near. This results in undue absorption of sound over a wide frequency range. Now that it is established that a sloped seating is a good idea, I have observed many a times a lack of certainty in deciding the slope of the seating. Now this part of the video involves some mathematics. I will try to make it seem as intuitive as possible. Later it boils down to a simple formula which you can use for all your designs. A is the distance from the source to the first row. B is the distance from the source to the last row. D is the distance between seat rows. E is the source height above head of the listener in the first row. H is the sightline clearance at the last row. This is simple trigonometry. D is the distance between rows and H is the sightline clearance. You can see that if we increase D, H proportionally increases. We can continue increasing D till it equals B and H will increase proportionally till it becomes X plus E. We remember from school that this angle alpha here will be equal to this angle here. We can see another right angle triangle forming here. From that we can see that tan of alpha will equal to x by a as tan of an angle is the opposite divided by the adjacent. If we solve for x we find the equation h equals d by b into bracket a tan alpha plus e. With this formula, you can now ascertain the slope of the required sight line clearance. Now h should be between 8 cm and 12 cm to ensure good visibility and avoid grazing sound attenuation. But this causes the overheight near the source to be much higher than the design goals. We don't want that because that makes the last row much high above the ground level and it also decreases the volume of the hall which is necessary for having good reverberance. The best possible way to tackle this issue is to have a constant over height for each row. Here is a person's head in the nth row. It is elevated hn above the height of the heads of the first row if hn is chosen according to this formula. Here D0 is the distance from the source to the first row. Dn is the distance to the nth row and gamma the desired angle between the tangent to the seating plane and the sight line to the source. Now if this is seeming too complicated, a much simpler workaround is to apply the linear slope formula to a smaller seating section. 
मे बी थ्री और फाइव रोज एट अ टाइम फ्रॉम आवर लास्ट वीडियो यू विल नो दैट कर्ड सर्फेसेस वर अ बिग नो नो वाइल डिजाइनिंग ऑडिटोरियम अकोस्टिक्स इफ यू हेव नॉट वॉच द वीडियो क्लिक ऑन द आई बटन टू वॉच इट इवन दो द फॉर्मुला मेक्स इट सीम सो वी वोट बी गेटिंग एन एक्जैक्ट स्मूथ कर्व एज ऑडियंस विल बी सीटेड ऑन द स्टेप वी ओनली नीड द साइट लाइन क्लियरेंस टू बी कॉन्स्टेंट वी कैनॉट चेंज द हाइट ऑफ द राइजर्स ऑफ द स्टेप्स बट टू गेट दिस वेरियंग स्लोप वी नीड टू चेंज द लेंथ ऑफ द ट्रेड्स टू थिंक ऑफ दिस सिंपली टेक अ लुक एट दिस एज द राइजर ऑफ ईच स्टेप रिमेन्स द सेम दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स इफ वी कीप ऑन रिड्यूसिंग द ट्रेड and this is what happens if we keep on increasing the tread going back a bit to our formula we can see that the site clearance is also a function of the source height in an existing construction this formula can be used to decide the height of the audio system but if visibility is the question the source is the subject itself and we obviously cannot hang the person on the ceiling so that he or she will be visible to everyone but we can definitely increase the height of the stage the formula helps in deciding how much height should be increased we hope that this video reduces the brain fog you may have had now you don't need to depend on guesswork and can present a sure shot solution to the clients with a mathematical backing if you find yourself stuck in similar brain fogs or in other domains of auditorium design or auditorium acoustics write them in the comment below connect with us on the number or email mentioned in the description if you like the video hit the hat kada and like and subscribe kar <laughs> if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe thank you bye bye